The following program is brought to you by Element 14, the electronic design community where you can connect and collaborate with top engineers from around the world. Join now at element14.com. Hi, and welcome back to The Learning Circuit, where we learn about basic electronics. Today, we're going to make a laser beam projector. Oh, yeah. Oops, 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 oops. <laughs> Here's how it works. We have a laser diode and two motors that are going to have mirrors attached to their shaft so that the mirror is spinning. When the laser beam hits the first mirror, it turns it into a circle. That circle gets reflected off of the second mirror and it's projected onto the wall into a kind of spirograph shape. Then we have potentiometers that allow us to adjust the speed of the motors so we can change how fast the spirograph is spinning. Let's do this. Okay, we need to put our tiny mirrors on the shaft of our motor, but that's a very small point of contact. So since these don't have gears already on them, I'm gonna add these other gear pulleys that I had lying around, and then that fits nice and snug onto the shaft, and I'm gonna glue this to the mirror so I have more surface area. I want the mirror to stay perpendicular to the shaft because it'll be more stable. Uh, and I also want it to be as centered as possible because if it's off center, that's how vibratory motors work and it's gonna shake around and that's not really what we want. I'm setting the laser and the motors in alignment and then I'll glue them into place. And then once our circuit is centered up, we can plug all three of them in. And hopefully when the motors spin, it'll turn the laser into circles. Eventually we'll have to cut a hole in the side of the container to let the light out. I made sure my case also has enough room for my proto board. I'm using pieces of craft foam squares to stand them off so there's enough room for the soldered bits on the bottom. And once this is all soldered up, I'm gonna have two potentiometers and a power switch sticking out the side. So once I have this all soldered up, I'll align those and cut those holes in the container. I also used a lunch container that has a separate compartment to hold my battery pack so I don't have to worry about it bouncing around and messing up my circuit. Now that we know where we want everything to go, let's look at our circuit. Okay, for our circuit, we need a laser and two motors. We're going to put them in parallel so that they are supplied the same voltage from the power supply. Now the laser is rated for five volts. And so I'm gonna use a six volt battery pack with four AA batteries. The laser is rated for 0.02 amps or 20 milliamps. So let's figure out what size resistor we need to put in line with the laser diode. So if we look at Ohm's law, we've got V over IR. We're trying to find resistance, so we need V over I. Now the voltage we want is the difference between the supply and what the part wants, which is one. So we've got one divided by 0.02, which gives us 50, 50 ohms of resistance. So in line with our laser diode, we're gonna add a 50 ohm resistor. Okay, that was the easy part of our circuit. Now let's move on to the motors. Since we want to be able to change the speed of our motors, we don't want to just use a potentiometer because that's kind of bad for it. So we can combine it with an LM317 voltage regulator to make a rudimentary motor controller. The LM317 has three pins. Pin one is adjustment, pin two is output, and pin three is input. There is an average voltage drop of 1.25 volts across the LM317 that's lost to heat. So if our power supply is six volts, then the voltage out of the LM317 should be a maximum of 4.75 volts. Because of the voltage drop, there is a risk of the LM317 overheating. It's best to add a heat sink to prevent this. Let's start making our circuit. I'm gonna start by placing my potentiometers and switch because I need to interface with them on the outside of the box. So I'm going to place them near the edge of the circuit. Okay, I've placed my LM317 right here, perpendicular to the potentiometer, so we have pins one, two, and three. I'll use this one to show you which ones I'm referring to. So if we go here, we've got pin one is going up here, 
and it's going to go to the first pin of the potentiometer. For pin two, aside from the resistor that we're gonna add later, we're going to have the positive side of our capacitor coming up here to pin two. We're also gonna have the positive lead of our motor coming up here to pin two. Then the other side of the negative pole of the capacitor is gonna come down here to a ground plane, as well as the negative pin of the motor, the negative side. It's gonna come down here to a ground plane, and then we're gonna connect pin two of the potentiometer all the way down here to the same ground plane. Pin three, pin three of our LM317, is going to go to the positive power of our battery pack. Now repeat the same circuit for the second motor controller. Next, I'm gonna add the plug for the battery pack. So the ground line is gonna to go to the middle pin on the switch, and then positive, we need to add two capacitors. So that's gonna be the positive of both of these 10 microfarad capacitors, and then the other side of the, it would be 50 ohms, but the closest value we have is a 47 ohm resistor that's gonna to go to our laser. So we'll solder this in and solder those all together. Okay, next we want to add the power lines that go to pin 3 of the LM317s to this power line that goes to the battery pack over here. Next we need to connect all of the ground planes. So we need to do this mini ground section that's over here for the first motor, this one for the second motor, the black ground pin of the laser, and then the two negative pins of the capacitors. And these are all gonna go up to pin one of the switch. Let's solder that up. To go along with the female header pins that are soldered to the board, I'm going to solder a male header pin onto the wires of the motor. So we're gonna have a red wire coming out of the positive terminal and a black wire out of the negative terminal. All right, we're almost done with our circuit, so we need to do some tests. So I've added some heat sinks onto our LM317s to make sure they don't overheat. So earlier I mentioned that we need to add a resistor between pins one and two of the LM317. So right now I have my resistance substitution box hooked up to those two pins of this LM317. Uh, and I have my multimeter hooked up to my motor over here. So we're gonna do some experiments to see what size resistor we want and what kind of voltage we get uh, depending on the resistance. So right now I have it selected to 100 kilo ohms, so that's 100,000 ohms. So let's turn on our circuit. I have my potentiometer all the way down. So let's see, we've got around one and a half, 1.6 volts. It's gonna bounce around a little bit. And I turn it all the way up. And we get a max of around three, oh, just shy of three volts. All right, let's turn that off, turn our pot all the way back down, and let's see what happens at 68 kilo ohms. Okay, switch that on a low of closer to, well, between one and a half and two volts, a little bit higher than before. And a max of closer to three and a half, four volts. Okay, 47 kilo ohms. See, pot all the way down. All right, minimum voltage. See, that's much steadier, closer to almost two volts, 1.75. And then if we turn it up, we get just over four volts. So depending on what size motor you use, you can choose which size uh, resistor you want um, when using a 10K potentiometer. I've decided to use a 100 ohm resistor. So I have it now between pin one and pin two of my LM317. I don't recommend doing it at this step. We probably should have done it earlier, but I wanted to show you my resistor trick. So this is gonna go here to pin two on that line, and this one will go to pin one, same over here. Pin one and pin two. Let's solder that up. OK, 
Okay, it's all hooked up. Let's test it before we put it all in the case. Power on. Laser works. Motors work. Potentiometer one. That's going faster. Going slower. Try the second one. Potentiometer two. Go motor, go. And slower. Great, let's button this up. To get the laser out of this laser pointer, we need to take this end off. And if you can see down in that tube, there's a little circuit board. If you grab that with needle nose pliers, that'll come out. Um, and then you have this part that you also need to get out. So I knocked it out with a really big screwdriver um, from that direction, and it just popped right out the front. Now, then you get this. Um, this originally had a spring on it, which you can see uh, down in that tube. Um, you can pull the spring off, and then I tested it uh, with a battery pack to see which was which lead. So I soldered a wire onto this plate here, and then also to this plate here is the negative. So the positive is where the diode is, and then the negative is back here on the other side of this little tiny resistor. Well, it's done, and I'm really happy with it. This was my first time making any kind of motor controller, and it was kind of a pain in my butt, but I got it to work. If you were gonna make a motor controller for this project, how would you do it? Tell us about it on the Element 14 community on element14.com forward slash the learning circuit. Happy learning. Mm -hmm.